David is the founder and president of Hispanic American Freethinkers, uh, the first and only national organization of its kind. David was also the vice president of the Reason Rally Coalition and has an extensive background in the support and growth of the secular movement. He has a master's degree in information technology from the University of Virginia and is the chief information officer for a large aerospace engineering company in Washington, D.C. and was a sponsor of the Langley High School cybersecurity team that competed in the U.S. Air Force's National Cyber Patriot Competition. Uh, David, that's, that's a mouthful right there, right? I, uh, I don't even know what half that means. David is currently working on a documentary about Latino beliefs in the United States. So let's give a warm welcome to David Tamayo. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, having me here. And uh, I'm really appreciative of, uh, for the opportunity to address you here today. I live in Washington, D.C. and. Uh, also, I'm old and my eyes are starting to fail and my memory even worse, so I'm going to be referring to my notes over here and I hope that's okay with all of you. Uh, and also, I'm not that as smart as we mentioned before. I haven't written any books. Uh, I don't have the brain capacity for it, I don't think, but uh, so I'm not selling anything. I just want to talk to you today uh, about uh, Latinos and how many, uh, well, let me start, how many people here uh, consider themselves or are Latinos or Hispanics? Oh, excellent. It's always good to see a couple. So before I get started, I want to I want to talk about the Latino versus Hispanic label. It's a lot of people, hey, am I doing this? Am I right? Is saying the right thing? Well, so being a Latino or Hispanic is not a race, it's an ethnicity. And for all practical purposes here, we're not going to get all academic. For all practical purposes, we're going to use the term interchangeably, Latino and Hispanic. In the West Coast, people tend to use the word Latino more among Latinos. And in the East Coast, it tends to be more Hispanic. And, uh, and, and it's, it's seen as the same. So uh, don't worry about it. And, uh, or in any case, we have any delegates from Washington, D.C., uh, no? I'm not going to refer to Hispanics as Mexicans. So Mexicans are Mexicans, Hispanics are Hispanics. So today is the last day of Hispanic Heritage Month. Now Hispanic Heritage Week was established by legislation proposed by Representative Edward Roybal, and it was first proclaimed, believe it or not, by President Lyndon Johnson in 1968, a long time ago. And uh, then it was expanded uh, by legislation sponsored by uh, Representative uh, Esteban uh, Torres and implemented by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover the period of 30 days from September 15th to October 15th. Now, the reason for that month is that a lot of countries in Latin America got their independence from Spain in, in those months, so they celebrate their independence at that time, so they figured, huh, one month, it's kind of weird, middle of the month to middle of the month, but you know, it's better than zero. So this means a lot of different things to different people. It's a celebration of contributions to the nation, such as in politics, like uh, Marco Rubio, uh, but counterbalance to that, Juan Mendes, who's a young future counterbalance, uh, contribution, uh, contributions in law, like uh, the Supreme Court Judge Sonia Sotomayor, very, very nice lady. Now, contributions to food. Now, where would this country be without Taco Bell? Actually, no, no, that's not a Latino contribution. <laughs> the secret is out now, no. Uh, but certainly, there are lots of uh, hard, uh, hard labor contribution, like agriculture, construction, like 99% of the offices and bathrooms in Washington, D.C. that are cleaned by Hispanics. I know because I used to be one of them at one point. And of course, in the entertainment industry, some Hispanics have done quite well. Shakira, Jennifer Lopez, Enrique Iglesias, Mark Anthony, Ricky Martin, Daddy Yankee, and many others. But apart from that celebration, I'd like to take a deeper look at where we are today as we celebrate free thought, and we also celebrate, at the same time, 
Hispanic Heritage Month, because apparently we humans are able to celebrate two things at the same time. Take that, chimps. Chimps can't do that. So in case you were wondering, yes, I am Hispanic. I'm a son, a father, a husband, a, co a college graduate, a Colombian immigrant. I'm chief information officer for that large aerospace engineering company, a volunteer, bilingual, bicultural, a humanist, an activist. I'm an atheist. I'm a free thinker, which by the way, doesn't mean atheist, sort of part of. So uh, I'm also an American citizen. And above all, I'm a human being. Living in today's America, I'm also very lucky. Because according to 23andMe, and if you don't know what that is, you need to get hooked, I am a male with about 80% of my genes coming from Europe. And that's supposed to give me an unfair advantage over many. But no worries, the edge gets eroded because I'm, I'm Hispanic. Those are just simple facts. And also, I'm not a typical Latino. Certainly, I am luckier than I deserve to be because I can check white on a mortgage or car loan application, or when I apply for a job, evidence shows that, his, that, that I have an advantage uh, or greater chance of getting that job than other Hispanics or blacks. Not the whites because of my name and accent, but certainly other Hispanics and blacks. That's just the sad reality in our 21st century America. Now, all hasn't been peaches and cream, but at least I made it. I got what I wanted the most. I got an education. So why am I speaking to you today? Not because I'm better than you, because I'm not. Not because I know more than you, because I don't. But maybe because I can bring into focus a forgotten perspective to what it is to be Latino in the United States of America. I'm here to remind you that although today's political climate calls for an us against them mentality, as free thinkers and skeptics, we should not consider it. I'm here to share concerns of where our nation is heading and to encourage each one of you to help change things for the better. Change things not just for the 58 million Hispanic Americans that are part of the fabric of our nation, but for the benefit of each one of us. Yes, I am appealing to your own selfish motives because making sure that Hispanics get a fair shake benefit the entire country as a whole. But before going forward, I'd, li I'd like to give you some facts. Uh, yes, I know, certain channel news viewers just heard Greek when I said the word facts, but I, I lose risk in them. Uh, I know free thinkers love facts, so I'll give you a few. Fact one, Native Americans of all the Americas, from Central, South, and North America, are the same people genetically. So, by the way, that same DNA test that shows that, is, uh, it also shows that the Book of Mormon is full of BS. And, but that's another topic for something else. Anyway. Many of these typical Latinos uh, that I saw working in the fields as I was coming here are in fact American natives. They have, these are people that have lived in this continent for over 12,000 years, way before the Europeans arrived. Even forgetting that, there's this great misconception that Latinos are recent arrivals, that they didn't exist in the United States until Rica Ricardo came from Cuba to do I Love Lucy. And yet, history books, and not statues, which apparently for some is the way you know Confederate uh, history. And history, so books in history teaches that Latinos lived in, the, in today's continental United States since the early 1500s, way before the British arrived in 1609. In 1775, that's one year before America declared independence from Britain, Spanish ships were exploring Alaska. And in 1783, way before the US Constitution with its we the people was written, Spain held claim to half of today's continental United States. Three of today's most populous states came from Mexico or Spain. Florida, Texas, 
in California. Now, to put things in perspective, African Americans make up 13% of the US population. Hispanic Americans are 18% of the population. That's 58 million Hispanic American citizens, with some being legal residents. That's right, this doesn't include much of the additional 8 million undocumented immigrants that we have here, Hispanic immigrants that we have in this country. Although a person in Washington, D.C. Uh, recently uh, told me that uh, uh, what I'm talking about is not Hispanics, it's Mexicans. So, no. so for, you know, we're talking about 58 million Americans that live here that are treated as second-class citizens. And I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, I'm preaching to the people that are actually not doing these things, but we need to create awareness. By 2060, according to the, to, to the uh, census, one in three Americans will be of Latino descent. Today, there, in the United States, there are more Spanish speakers in this country than in any other country in the world, except for Mexico. Wow, that's a relief. I was afraid that, uh, that some guy with a red hat that says, let's make America great, uh, was going to say fake news. Uh, because, you know, sadly, we live in a country where you no longer have to show evidence, where you just yelling fake news is your counter evidence, and where a high school dropout's Google search is as good as your PhD in physics. I I've seen that, and it's just horrible. Anyway, getting back to uh, today, the last day of Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm going to talk a, lot, a little bit about what it is being Hispanic in America. Last week, in Virginia, where I live, I saw an ad on TV uh, where a new governor is being elected in November. And uh, one of the candidates, Ed Gillespie, uh, had this uh, ad full of horror showing this uh, Salvadorian gangs, uh, MS-13, and showing uh, uh, tattoos and jails and, and people de dying and be getting shot and all of that. And uh, the ad concludes by saying that his opponent, a pediatrician army doctor vet, supports sanctuary cities, implying that anyone that supports or anyone that tries to help undocumented immigrants is supporting the MS-13 gang members. You know, uh, they know that these people don't vote regardless of what other politicians say, and so they can take a, 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 a hit on them. So the problem is now people that are less educated than you are, or that are less thinkers than you are, think, oh, is that guy cutting my grass, an MS-13 uh, gang member? Is he going to, is, is the, guy, the person cleaning my toilet in my office an MS-13 gang member? Is he going to murder or rape my family? After all, our beloved leader knows that those are all Mexicans, and all Mexicans are rapists. Now, many of you know that my full name at, until about 10 years ago was Juan David Tamayo. And I started noticing that people with less skills and less performance than me at work, you know, were getting promotions, and I was being passed. Uh, and I started suspecting that I was being treated a little different, and so I did a test for a couple of years. I, half the people I met, I told them my name is David, the other half, my name is Juan. And after a while, I, not, I, I noticed a distinct difference, just when you, people have presuppositions. This was unconscious. People, I'm not saying that people, every person that I met was racist, it's just this in the back of your mind. And so I decided to drop legally the name Juan, and my career took off. Coincidence? Maybe. But you know who else had to change their name to succeed? This guy named Carlos Esteves, also known as Martin Sheen. Also Raquel Tejada, also known as Raquel Welch. And an actor named uh, James David Rodriguez, also known as James Rodaday. So discrimination is everywhere, open or implicit, but too often goes overboard into the ridiculous. A few years ago, Sebastián de la Cruz, an 11-year-old boy from uh, San Antonio, Texas, performed the national anthem at the NBA while dressed in a mariachi uh, clothes. Now, this is the uniform that he used when he sings with his family group. And Twitter went off in a storm. Quote, 
why they got a Mexican kid singing the national anthem from Daniel Gilmore. I give names because, you know, they, they must be proud if they're put in there. Uh, quote, how are you singing the national anthem looking like an illegal immigrant? And this is from Andre Lacey, a proud father and firefighter from Augusta, Georgia. Quote, why is a foreigner singing the national anthem? I realize that's San Antonio, but still it ain't Mexico, from El Groth. Quote, Mexican kids singing the national anthem? Now that's pretty fucked up. Hashtag America first by Dalton Jingle. Quote, can't believe they had the nerve to have a beaner sing the national anthem of America, America all in caps. So it's not just the people that are ignorant. It's not just the, you know, we can say, yeah, these are just ignorant people and you know, they, they're everywhere. But those who are supposed to be representing us often don't fall behind. There's a billboard in Arizona paid by Paul uh, Babu, Babu, I think is his name, uh, from Pinal County Sheriff, with a picture of a typical Hispanic family, mom, dad, a five-year-old boy, and a 12-year-old daughter. Very nice picture, actually, very nice. And it said, quote, this is the most serious public safety issue and a national security threat to America, close quote. Now, you see blinking lights, stopping you for speeding for whatever in the, in the highway, what do you think is gonna happen? How, you know, what, what, what fairness do you expect? How ignorant can you be and still be allowed to carry a gun? Apparently very. Alaska representative Don Young, a couple of years ago, quote, my father had a ranch. It used to have 50 to 60 wetbacks to pick tomatoes. Don, don, don. Representative of whom? Certainly not of, of all the people. How about Sheriff Perry Johnson from Almans County, North Carolina, ordering his police officers, quote, if you stop a Mexican, don't write a citation, arrest him. Notice I left out the obvious ones that you all know, like a certain convicted racist sheriff from Maricopa County in Arizona who was recently pardoned by another more powerful and just as vocal racist. Although, Again, I had a friend who said, well, you know, that he wasn't discriminated against Latinos because, you know, Latinos is not a race. Checkmate. I just walked away. So the fact remains that the toughest, least paid, less respected, less appreciated jobs are being done by Hispanics. These are the jobs that, are, that apparently are being stolen from more deserving Americans. Although I gotta tell you, I've never seen someone in line to get a, a, a job to clean toilets. Trust me on that. If, you, if we are 18% of the population, I expect to see 18% Hispanic in the House of Representatives. After all, that's what they're supposed to represent. But we only have 8%. If we are 18% of the US population, I expect to see 18% Hispanic in the Senate. But alas, only 4% and oh, by the way, this is the highest percentage ever. We're like, you know, breaking through. Are there 18% are there Hispanic corporate executives? Hell no, less than 1%. I mentioned that Hispanics have done well in entertainment. This is true for a few individuals, but for the past two decades, Hispanic characters make up only 3% of the top grossing films. Now, Jennifer Lopez, who is amazing in many respects, very talented, has received offers to play a maid over 2,000 times, while only receiving four or five offers to be a leading character. Because, and, and the same goes for the male counterparts. They are offered acting jobs as landscapers. <laughs> By the way, that's why I'm dressed like this, so they don't send me to the, cut the grass. Uh, <laughs> It is surprising then that we have in power the people, I mean, is it surprising that we have in power the people that we do? Granted that we Hispanics must take ownership and responsibility for some of those problems. Anyone that knows me and has heard me speak to other Latino groups knows that I'm extremely tough with Hispanic Americans. We have to claim the Ted Cruz's of this nation, although I'm not sure he considers himself a Hispanic. I have to apologize for the 30% of Hispanics that voted against their own best interest. <coughs> Trump. <coughs> uh, we Latinos discriminate each other a lot. 
I'll get in trouble for this, but typically Argentinians and Chileans look down on American natives from Bolivia or Central America. And that discrimination often carries into future generations here in the States. So as we celebrate Heritage Month and have taken advantage to bring everyone down by talking about the ugly discrimination, I'd like to give some words of wisdom because if I'm giving a microphone, that must mean that I'm somehow wise or at least that's what I want to believe. So remember that culture is a set of man-made ideas. As, a free, as free thinkers, you know that all ideas can and should be questioned. All ideas must stand on their own merit. American culture today is not the same as American culture of 1957. It changes. Well, at least for now, we're heading back in that direction, you know, to make American great. But for now, it's very different. All cultures have great things, indifferent things, and bad things. Latino cultures, notice I, I use plural because there are many different Latino cultures, are no different in this aspect. This means that we should criticize the bad and celebrate the good. I know many of you have told me, hey, listen, man, I'm a white male. I'm not criticizing shit. Because if I do it, I'm going to be seen as a racist. I recommend that just use the Socratic method and never, ever accept that's my culture as a reason for anything. Now, Another piece of advice, please support the dreamers. For those of you that they may not know what that is, the dreamers are these kids who were brought in the United States as kids to no fault of their own and who grew up in this country not knowing any other country in the world than this one. Many didn't even find out that their parents were undocumented until they were about to go to college. And uh, a lot of them are very smart and they are a value, they're very valuable to our country. As I said, these kids didn't do anything wrong, so please, you know, support them and help them uh, when it comes to uh, politicians and, and trying to influence uh, uh, them, because it'll be a great loss to our country. Now, as a last thing, I want to plead, seriously, I want to plead for the 3.5 million Americans who are suffering in the United States today. These are American citizens that have no electricity, no running water. This means that diabetics don't have a way to keep insulin refrigerated. Mosquito-borne disease is increasing. Heart surgeries and other critical medical treatment is nearly zero. And of course, I'm talking about Puerto Rico, which I hear is full of Latinos over there. After two weeks, the US government helping uh, after two weeks of the U.S. government helping, our beloved leader in D.C. said, quote, Puerto Rico can't get aid forever. After two weeks. And yet, we've given trillions of dollars in aid to Afghanistan for 16 years without blinking an eye. As a country, we're willing to spend almost trillions of dollars rebuilding other nations, but when it comes to our own American citizens, after a couple of weeks of help, we're looking for an exit strategy. Or, or is it because Puerto Rico is full of Mexicans? I don't know. But it, it's really funny how this administration seems to have money for a $20 billion Mexican wall, going back to a vision of East-West Germany in Iron Curtain, which will somehow make America great again. So before I conclude, I, I have two shameless plugs. One is there's a book coming out called Women Versus Religion, The Case Against Faith and for Freedom. And it'll come out in the spring. And the other plug is for Hispanic American free thinkers who we have been collecting water filters, solar cookers, solar powered cell phone chargers, etc., to help the people in Puerto Rico. Because, you know, thank you. And we live in a society where, you know, uh, we looked at the news for 10 minutes, and then it's the next thing, and the next thing. And, and now you, you, you don't see it in, in the front news, even though people are, are dying over there. Anyway, so please help us help them. Bottom line, in a time when many, if not most people, have outsourced their thinking, and people are proud to be ignorant, 
you know, I'm not a scientist, but that drives me up the wall. Uh, we need to rise above all that. We need to realize that by 2060, someone in your family might be Latino. I'm not asking for a special privilege for Latinos, no sir. I'm simply asking for equal opportunity and equal access. Equal opportunity, that's all. If we take care to educate all people, making a conscious effort not to discriminate based on ethnicity, will be okay. Our nation will survive the current struggles and we will overcome racism and unfair discrimination. It is up to us all to educate everyone so that we can really become, by all measures, the best nation in the history of humanity. It's all up to you and me. That's all I have to say. Thank you.